Welcome back. So we were talking, you know, in the first segment, you know, mentioned women in politics and, you know, Esther was so, so passionate about it. <laughs> yes. We have another yes. person in the house and we'll be talking about gender role in nation building. Ending all discrimination against women and girls is not only a basic human right, it's crucial for sustainable future. It's proven that empowering women and girls help economic growth and development. And, you know, some people say, if you want it done, give it to a woman. You know? Yes. Yes. And so we have in the house this morning um, the UN Women Country Representative to Nigeria, Comfort Lamti. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much and uh, good morning. Good to have you here. Thank you. We're talking gender, you know, the role of gender in, in nation building. What's our role? So uh, I look at Nigeria having just uh, come out of uh, elections in the last couple of months and um, seeing that uh, at the end of that process we now have just about 4% of women represented in the National Assembly and, and that I think is a crisis. I think that is uh, a crisis that should be of concern to every Nigerian because... Um, why, why do you see it as a crisis? I see it as a crisis because um, in the context where Nigeria, as uh, part of the community of nations, has uh, committed to promote uh, the advancement of women as a critical uh, part of uh, ensuring development of the country, mm -hmm. uh, and promoting the participation of women means investing in uh, girls' education, investing in women's uh, participation in, in economic life, and harnessing the capacities of women to contribute to decision-making of the country. So um, in all areas, uh, it is important to ensure that half of the population, the potential of half of the population is harnessed. I don't believe that we can uh, see uh, sustainable development in any of our countries in Africa if we continue to leave half of uh, our human capital behind. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's not uh, an option. I, I, I think it, it is a necessity. Yeah. And, and bringing women into the public space to be able to uh, promote issues and priorities that not only concern women, but the whole the community, whether it's in the area of education, health, we have seen and, 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 and uh, globally uh, the many studies that have shown that in countries, in parliaments, where you have a significant representation of women, you see that some of the issues that come on the fore on the policy agenda uh, are broader. So women are more likely to highlight issues of investment in, in infrastructure, in addressing violence against women, in education and in health, uh, as much as in addressing issues of security and other things. Yeah. So I think it, it is important. Women make a difference. Uh, our experiences are different. And, and so it can only enrich the governance of a country when we have more women in leadership. Yeah, you, you, you said that uh, only about 4% representation at the moment in Nigeria's National Assembly, well, legislative body. Uh, what percentage should we be looking at? What percentage is apt, is considered apt by the UN? So um, let me start by the UN ourselves, because uh, uh, clearly the, the issue of uh, advancing uh, or promoting women's role in leadership is a work in progress everywhere in the world. Uh, but there are countries that are making progress. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I take the UN, uh, you know, uh, the Secretary General, the current uh, Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, when he came into power, and, and this, this is important because it is about political will. Uh, uh, and, and leadership decisions that, you know, I want to lead by example. I want to make sure that my cabinet uh, reflects 50% mm. of the world in which we, 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 we are working for. Mm. And so today, at the highest level of the UN, at the leadership position, we have for the first time 50% uh, representation of women in leadership position. And, and that happened because our Secretary General took that decision. I think it's, it's possible everywhere. We've seen it happen in Rwanda, in Africa, right here in Africa, 
it, it is Rwanda that's leading the way for the whole world mm. because Rwanda has over 60% representation, 60. over 60% of women in, in, in the political space. And again, it's a question of political will. Well, President Kagame made that uh, uh, decision. Mm. And right even closer to home in Senegal, Senegal, a smaller country, a uh, Muslim country, uh, progressive, but has 50% representation of women in their parliament, mm. as well as at the local level. You know, sometimes uh, people, you hear the argument that, well, there's religious uh, conservatism, that's sometimes the reason. But, you know, Senegal uh, is, a, is, a, is a very religious Muslim country, but has 50% representation. And I think that, um, well, they legislated it, and that's another important point, mm. uh, because they have the Agenda Parity Bill, which made it possible. And I think here, here in Nigeria, we need to, to legislate no, uh, no, but, but, this but as well. On. In Africa, won't this seem to be a problem? Okay, you've mentioned Senegal, you've mentioned Rwanda, but on the whole, the culture in Africa is that the women follow the men. It's the men who are in front, and we are supposed to take a back seat, be, culture, in, the, be in the kitchen. Culture is dynamic. Culture is dynamic, and our cultures change. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, there are things that were considered culturally acceptable uh, 50 a years decade ago. ago, and today are not. Yep. Uh, even in Africa, uh, even as you say in Africa, I, I mean, I think in West Africa, uh, I would say that our uh, picture is probably uh, less rosy than in other parts of Africa because when I take East and Southern Africa, many there are many countries where we, we have a significant representation of women in politics, from South Africa to Uganda to Botswana, uh, you name it, Tanzania, you know. And, and I think that when you look at... Um, the, 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 the picture of, of what makes the difference, uh, in many cases, I, the countries have actually adopted laws, laws that, that uh, provide space for affirmative action, or if you want to call it temporary special measures. The idea of uh, um, having a law that requires you to have a certain percentage of women in, in politics and decision making is premised on the fact that if you don't do that, if you're just waiting on, on, on the good or because of things like culture, because of uh, uh, the way we've been doing things, the discriminatory practices and so on, mm. it will take longer. And so you, you legislate and you have temporary measures until you get to a stage where you have a critical mass. Now, in, in, in the UN, we can, as you said, we are aiming for equal participation. But uh, studies have also shown that in any context, you need a critical mass to make a difference, to make your voice heard. So if, if you had a, a room of 20 men and one woman, it's very <laughs> difficult for that woman's voice to be heard. Yeah. Now, take that same room and have 12 men and 8 women. You have more of a chance because you have a critical mass of women. And so it makes a difference. Uh, in terms of even women's ability to, to, to engage and influence a, a, a situation if you have more numbers. So in a situation where we already have um, cultural issues, social issues, you know, stashed up against women, um, of course, nobody's going to serve you this position on a platter of gold. How prepared are the women to take up some of these positions? Well, if the... Uh, what I, I witnessed, uh, and it was my first uh, electoral outing in Nigeria, uh, this, this past elections, if anything to go by. I, during the, the, at the, at the start of the process, there were so many women aspirants. Uh, and, and, and there was even uh, conversations with a variety of them on what they stand for, what their aspirations are. Indeed, I saw so many uh, excellent women. I don't think Nigeria is not short of uh, uh, women of excellence. I, I believe that they are very strong, um, dynamic uh, women, women who stand to promote women's rights in Nigeria. And so 
I think there are women who are who are prepared uh, and, and who have what it takes. Um, I think we just need to make sure that the playing field is 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 leveled out mm. and that they're given the opportunity to serve mm. and 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 add their quota to the development of the country. Okay. Now, um, what do you think about the Me Too movement? And can you see that ever happening anywhere in Africa? So the Me Too movement, uh, for me, actually uh, demonstrates that, you know, the, the issues around violence against women and, 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 and sexual harassment are global, that they know no class or, or economic color. or color boundaries. <laughs> And uh, we have seen that uh, even here in Africa, um, women have also added their voice to the Me Too campaign. Um, and uh, perhaps not at the same level or mm. rate uh, as, as, as what we've seen from Hollywood. But even here in Nigeria, uh, we've seen, uh, I believe you may be familiar with the Arewa Me Too movement mm -hmm. from uh, northern Nigeria, which mm -hmm. also has started uh, the conversation around issues of sexual harassment facing women in northern Nigeria. And, and, and we've seen in countries like Kenya and South Africa and, and, and so in Senegal, uh, women have also stood up in, in, in the wake of the Me Too movement to actually also raise issues around sexual harassment and so on. So I think uh, it resonates with, with us in here in Africa as much as it does uh, in Europe. Uh, clearly we have uh, probably more in inhibitions and barriers to, to get women to sometimes come out and speak out. They don't talk but about they, it. Nobody they, talks but they about are it. because there's, there are sanctions, there's a price to pay, mm. you know, and again it goes back to our culture because, you know, if a woman says, I've, I've been raped or I've been harassed, we oftentimes, be, be, because of the, the culture of blaming the victim, we will start <coughs> with the woman herself. So what did you do? What were you what, wearing? What did you wear? Uh, exactly. And so the, Why <laughs> did you go with him to that place? Exactly. You know, the, 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 the starting point is to blame the victim rather than say, irrespective of, you know, what, where I went or, mm. or what I was where you have mm. no right to violate my, my body. And, and, and uh, it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it, it's a gradual <laughs> uh, process Indeed. of really getting people to understand that, you know, women have right, a, a right uh, to preserve their body and, mm. and, and, and uh, it's a work in progress. Mm. Now, the issue of poverty, um, Studies have shown that in Africa, about 70% of the poor people are women. And if we're still battling poverty, how are we then going to prepare ourselves for leadership roles? How are we going to deal with this problem of poverty, get more women out of poverty so that they become more politically conscious so that they can now get prepared or they can be prepared for these roles that we're talking about? So, I mean, I think um, the, the fact that the face of poverty in Africa is a woman's face, uh, for me also is, is, uh, underscores the need for us to have more women in leadership. And why, you know, because from cradle to the grave, there are so many barriers that we need to remove to make women uh, be able to be full citizens in a, in, in a society. So education, where in a context where we, would, we may decide to favor the education of a boy child over a girl child, or decide that, well, you're only going to be good for marriage, and so you don't need to go beyond a certain level of education. Already you've taken a decision to limit that young girl's potential. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're not giving her the ability, the access to education, um, if you are not um, providing her with the, the kind of skills that she can have to be able to break that poverty trap, we are continually uh, promoting that cycle of, of poverty. So I think it's, it's it's something that we need to look at from, um, as I said, from the cradle to the grave. And we need more women in leadership to bring these issues 
to, to the, the policy mm. uh, table mm. so that we can make the kinds of policy changes that will allow women to develop their full potential. And I think the fact that women are poor means the nation is poor because um, if 70% of, of the poor are women, that means the country itself is poor. So we need, if we really want to accelerate development on our continent, we must invest in, in, in addressing women's uh, development needs and helping them to achieve their full potential. I, I'm sure you've heard the saying, you know, women are their own worst enemies. Have you heard that before? Yes. Well, <laughs> okay, but uh, most of the time, okay, I hear it and I'm still wondering, you know, what how did we, yes, mm -hmm. arrive at that? But there was a time in this country, there was an election mm. and a woman was contesting. Yeah. And all she got One was, I think, vote. her vote, just mm -hmm. her vote. One. And there were women at that, um, it was a delegate's conf um, yes. conference mm -hmm. that they needed to. Primaries. Primaries. Mm -hmm. And then she got only her vote. What happened to the other women? How do we support ourselves? So I think, I wish you, I, you know, I think when women are running for office, it would be great for them to get votes of women uh, running for, on, on, on issues-based uh, campaign, running issues-based campaign about issues that are important to women. But I think it would be important for men to also vote for women uh, and see women as leaders uh, of both women and men. Mm. Now, um, I, I believe that we as women are as much products of our culture as the men are. And the, the things uh, or the, the, the cultural uh, practices that we may consider uh, archaic or, 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 or negative to, to, to our development uh, have been internalized by women as well uh, as men. So in as much as a man may say, no, your role is in the kitchen, I don't see you as uh, the person uh, leading a, 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 a country or uh, having a seat in the Senate, many women have also, are we also products of that culture. So seeing another woman trying to break out of that uh, barrier mm. sometimes takes uh, some doing. You know, and so we need to work on the psyche of both our men and our women in, 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 in many cases. We live and experience the, 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 the barriers and the discrimination mm. that hold us back. And so more likely we may be able to speak against it, but sometimes we've internalized it as much as the men. So I think the kind of change that we want in terms of the mindsets uh, have to happen at the level of both women and men. Okay. I think we'll, we'll soon take a break, and, um, but when we come back, we'll be talking about how we can change that mindset, mm -hmm. even for the women, you know, mm -hmm. perhaps how we raise the girl child mm -hmm. and some of the other issues surrounding, you know, this women empowerment. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. Quite a number of issues, you know, raised in that report, and um, I see that you, you were part of that. You know, what from that meeting? What did you get as a feeling as to where the women, you know, are pushing forward to? So I think uh, the, that meeting was intended to be the beginning of a process of uh, reflection, post mortem, if you like of the 2019 elections and, and you know, the start of a, a strategizing towards 2023, because I think um, one of the key lessons that uh, women have recognized uh, in terms of the electoral cycle is that you don't start supporting women in politics, you know, two years to an election even. You must start the day after the last election. And so the need for an early start. But I think uh, a number of issues came up. The need for us to look at try having more women in the leadership space of political parties um, and making sure that the, the culture and the work practices of political parties themselves are conducive for women to mm -hmm. be able to engage mm -hmm. uh, so that things like having meetings in the middle of the night mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. for women oftentimes this is not uh, uh, appropriate convenient. and convenient. Mm -hmm. um, making sure that, you know, we, we create spaces for young women 
to also enter the, the, the political space. Yeah, because one of the, the respondents there, you know, talked about capacity building, mm -hmm. you know, holding the hands of others to come up. Mm -hmm. So how important is this for, for any woman that is looking to be in, in a leadership position? I think it is important because, you know, uh, we're talking about a space that has been dominated and occupied by men. And we are trying to see how women can also uh, uh, increase their presence in that space. Um, and so there is a need for us to invest in getting more uh, women to understand the workings of the political system. Those who, who are novices and coming into that space for the first time. And so the air issue of capacity building is important because, you know, a, winning an election is not just because I say I want, I have, I have values, I have issues I want to promote. You know, there's a whole culture <laughs> to the mm. political system, yeah. uh, seen and unseen. And I think it's important that women understand and are able to navigate it. So I think the capacity building is important. It's important even for women who are elected also. Mm. Uh, I mean, we now are going into um, a, a, a new parliament which is going to see um, where in, 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 in the last National Assembly we had 22 women, now we're going to have, I think, 11 or 12 women in the National Assembly. So we've even halved the numbers. Mm -hmm. But even so, that's why it's, it's all the more important. So where some of these women are coming into that space for the first time, we need to be able to also invest in building their capacity so that they actually know how to work uh, uh, the national policy making processes mm. in a way that can advance women's rights. So capacity building is key both for women seeking to enter political office and then those who have actually been elected as well. What role does mentorship play in all of this? Absolutely key. I think that uh, one of the things I observed, uh, which was very encouraging uh, in the in, uh, during the uh, run up to the 2019 elections, was the number of young women who who were engaged, who were seeking to run for political office. That was very encouraging, and and for me that means that you know Nigeria's future is bright as far as the the enthusiasm and interest of young women uh, seeking to enter political office. And, and having mentorship, and of course, mentorship is not just about uh, older women mentoring younger women, mm -hmm. you know, it's even about peer mentorship, women who are already in, in, in politics mentoring the other peers. But I, and, and I think it's, it's really key uh, because it, 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 it adds to building the confidence, it adds to helping them to, to know the ropes and, and, and to be able to perform more effectively, and especially in a context where there are so few women anyway, it's important that uh, mentorship is given priority because that would enable them to also perform better mm. going forward. Mm. I've seen in some, um, I think, can't remember the country now, but, you know, the lady came with her child New to Zealand, the, okay. the New Zealand And, Prime you Minister. know, while the deliberations were going on, Arden. she was breastfeeding her baby. Mm. Mm. Do we also need to have some kind of change in policy just so we can accommodate more women? Because we have peculiar challenges that we need to face. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's about making our spaces, our public spaces, more gender friendly. For me, that's what it is. It's about recognizing the specific uh, requirements or needs that women have. Yes, women have babies, and that is nothing to be ashamed of, and mm -hmm. women need to breastfeed. Mm -hmm. And so um, certainly in the, U in the UN, even here for us, uh, the UN in Nigeria at UN House, we created a space for young um, women, ma you know, nursing mothers, who can be able to breastfeed their baby during working hours. I mean, th those, those are not, um, they shouldn't be seen as exceptional things. I mean, these are things that should, normal. Be, they should done. be normal. We need to normalize these yeah. uh, practices so that it makes it more easier for women to be able to give their full uh, contribution to, to an organization or, or, or to a nation. And, 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 and it, it, you know, in every, at every step of the way, and this speaks to our institutions, is what we're talking about politics, when you're having meetings in the middle of the night for a woman who may have a young child at home or a husband who may be reluctant to see their wife going mm -hmm. to have a meeting mm -hmm. in the, the 3 a.m. <laughs> so we need to look at, okay, so what time then is most convenient? We need to ensure that we take the, the realities of women into account 
when we are making these decisions so that uh, it works for women as much as for men. You know, every time they say uh, politics, murky waters of politics, mm. how many women can swim in it? Well, <laughs> um, when it becomes murky. So if it's murky, then maybe we need to just clean it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what you know? women do anyway. We, yes, we need to clean them, those murky waters so that it can be clean water that both women and men can swim in. The idea is not to take murky waters and put women in because women can then become murky just like the men. Yeah. So let our objective be how do we clean the murky waters so that women and men can swim and, 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 and have more efficient results, you know? And, and that speaks to our institutions. What do we need to do to change some of these practices to make it easier for, for both women and men to serve? Now, in, in, in a lighter mood, maybe people like um, women in business and management should actually invite a Theresa May, for instance, or an Angela Merkel to come and tell them how they have managed to remain in power, for, especially Angela Merkel, who's been the Prime Minister for God knows how many years, how she's been able to cope with being in that position and being a woman. Yeah, and we can even look, we can even look closer to home in Liberia, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, Liberia so had the so first mm -hmm. female mm -hmm. president, president mm -hmm. uh, in Africa who was able to serve two terms of, I think, uh, five or six years each. each. Uh, immediately after a brutal conflict mm -hmm. uh, and was able to hand over power uh, peacefully uh, uh, during the elections last year. I mean, that's, that's a, a, a fantastic experience to share. And, you know, when, when people say that women don't support women and I look at the Liberia elections and I see how the market women, uh, women in civil society, all gathered uh, around the common vision of we need to get a woman elected as president and put a woman in, 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 in the pre uh, presidency. And that woman served her 12-year term and, and with minimal uh, disruption, so mm, to speak. Li Liberia continues to be on, on the path of recovery uh, to this day. So I think there are women uh, like uh, Madame Sirleaf, like Angela Merkel, who, yes, um, their, their experiences uh, seem unique, but you know, they stand as testament to the fact that women can lead and can lead under very difficult circumstances. Okay. We've talked so much about w women in politics. Let's look at women in the boardroom, women in other areas of life, how they can also take charge mm. and lead in those areas. Mm. I think in Nigeria we uh, we we we're seeing that the the in terms of representation in the boardrooms is is slightly better, more encouraging. Uh, I believe it's probably about twenty percent uh, of of board membership uh, 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 in 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 the corporate field are le uh, women, mm -hmm. and 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 that's good. And we need to look at what lessons we can learn from that as well, uh, in t in in terms of looking at how we can get more women in the political space. But certainly it's important um, in all areas to have women. One of the uh, issues we discussed um, at the meeting uh, you screened yesterday was the, the need for women uh, across different sectors to, 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 to be able to converge around issues of commonality. So if you're a woman in the private sector, if you're a woman in the media, you're women working in CSOs, you're, work, you're women uh, in, in politics. There needs to be a coalescence around a common vision of what it is that women in Nigeria want mm -hmm. uh, to shift and, and that the power and the force of that coming together, irrespective of the sector you're coming from, would really make a tremendous uh, difference in terms of the development of, 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 of the country. And, and it's particularly important at this time because, you know, next year, is going to be 25 years since um, the world met in Beijing, Beijing. China, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, to adopt the, 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 the Beijing Declaration mm -hmm. and Platform for Women. I, I've been speaking to many young women uh, in recent months, and you ask them, so do you know about the Beijing conference? And they don't. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think, you know, the 25th anniversary is actually a moment 
uh, for us to look at handing that torch to young women. Mm -hmm. What kind of world, what kind of a Nigeria do young women want to see in the next 25 years? You know, because this is going to be their agenda to drive. Um, 25 years ago, uh, we, you know, a lot of progress has happened. You know, sometimes we don't see uh, uh, progress as much. We've seen uh, 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 developments, you know, at the time we used to talk about women in armed conflict, women, mm -hmm. you know, we want to see more women. Today we see so much that has happened. We see a whole regime that has been set up to support women in, in the security sector and, and so on. But having come into that point, and, and this is the, the, the need for that common vision is important because uh, for women in Nigeria, because if we 25 years ago, uh, where, were, where was Nigeria in terms of uh, its journey for mm. women's advancement? And where are we now? Are we going to report in Beijing that, you know, today we stand at 4% representation mm -hmm. in, in politics, when perhaps 25 years we were probably even much better, you maybe, know. Maybe so, 5 uh, So there are areas of progress and areas where we've gone back. But we also have to make sure that this agenda is one that is, is, is led by young women, and that they begin to define the kind of, and imagine the kind of world, the kind of country they want to lead uh, in 25 years from now, and, and, and that we give that uh, mantle to them to move forward. That 4% mm. that we're talking about in, in representation at the National Assembly, why do you think we moved back? What are those factors so that we can address them and see how we can move forward? So, if you look at the representation of women in the National Assembly in the last three elections, mm -hmm. I think um, okay. it let, has been... Let me help you out with, I think I have the figures here. So in 1999, okay, there were seven women. Mm -hmm. In 2003, four. Nine in 2007, um, seven in 2011, and seven in 2015. In the Senate. Yes. In the Senate. Uh, so when you, if you take the average of the Senate and, and the National Assembly, you had something like 7% mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in uh, 2000 and, was it 2009? Yes. And then 2000 and... 2000 and... 1999. No, seven. 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, then 2015, seven. you had something like 5.6%. No, I'm taking okay, the average okay. of both Senate and, uh, okay. and House of Reps. Okay. And then now you have 4%. So you would see that in the last three electoral cycles, we've gone backwards yes. progressively. Why? Yes. And, 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 and this is what um, we've got to try to, to, to analyze. I think the system itself, it's, 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 it's not conducive. Uh, the, we need to maybe relook at the structure of, of the, 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 the machinery of mm -hmm. politics and electoral politics in Nigeria and say, so what is it? about that that is hindering uh, the rise or, uh, of women in such a system? And what do we need to change to make it? Uh, because women complained from the primaries, uh, from the stage, the primary stage, they, we, we already knew that women were not going to uh, emerge in any significant numbers mm -hmm. because so many of them were eliminated at that stage. Because at the end of the primaries, we only had 31 women from the uh, two leading parties. So you knew that at most only a third of them were going to make it through. And so what is it at every stage of the system, this is what I'm talking about, we need to look at the uh, political parties, uh, their systems, their structure, their culture, their practices, uh, and we need to look at uh, the electoral law and how that can also be uh, amended to, to make it possible for women to, to, to participate, and then we need to look at the nature of politics itself, the, the whole issue of monetization of politics, the, the, the transactional nature of uh, Yeah, because uh, I was just practice. thinking, could it also be an issue of money, you know, politics? Okay, we're talking about Nigeria. It's expensive. Mm. And so how many women are able to, you know, muscle such amounts of money to be able to Expand that's, that's, on elections. That's, that's the reality. And we talked earlier about the, uh, the, the level of poverty affecting women generally. You know, women are poorer than men. And, mm. and, and, and uh, women have less access to resources than men. So they are already disadvantaged. So if you make money 
<laughs> one of the key criteria mm. for success in this game, you're already disenfranchising a lot of women. So all of these are factors that really uh, continue to hold women back, and we need to interrogate all of them and see how we can make it more... Uh, I was smiling as you were talking about uh, amendments to the electoral law and you know stuff like that, and I'm thinking, but basically... Oh, the bodies that are responsible for all these changes, are, the bodies are all peopled <laughs> by men. So are the men going to just open the door for, for the women to walk in? Well, you know, this is, we, we have to, we are in a context where in Nigeria we have to look at the men who are progressive. Uh, men have daughters. <laughs> Right. They have wives, uh, they have mothers. And they, 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 they have aspirations for their daughters. And what kind of a, a Nigeria do you want your daughter to grow in? Uh, and, uh, or, or what kind of uh, uh, limits do you want to grow, they might put say on that's, your they, daughter's potential? They might say that's sentiment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, it's true. This is what we're talking about. In the same way that you may not want somebody to put a barrier in, 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 in your, your daughter's, daughter's way. way. You need to look at the country, the nation, in the same way and say, how do we create and open the doors and opportunities for women? So we are going to need to uh, count on, on the support of men, uh, 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 many of the progressive men, and I believe there are many of them in Nigeria who can really work with the few women uh, within government and outside to bring about some of these changes. Mm. Okay, we, we are winding down now, but let's quickly talk about, you know, the UN women, the things that you do for gender in Nigeria, quickly. So, okay, so UN women, uh, as you know, we are the UN uh, agency for women. Uh, UN women was established 10 years ago, so we're still uh, fairly new. Before that, we, it, it was a collection of different uh, mechanisms in the UN that addressed issues of gender. Um, here in Nigeria, uh, we had the program uh, component that existed before UN Women was established. So we, we, we've been in Nigeria for over 20 years. Uh, we program around uh, the areas of political participation, which we've been talking about. Uh, so uh, supporting women's uh, role in politics. Uh, the other area we program about is women, peace and security. Supporting women to participate in decision making in peace and security, and we're working in the Northeast. And then the issues around women's economic empowerment also uh, form another key area of the work that we do uh, mm. in Nigeria. Okay, we'd like to say well done, and um, we're hoping that all of this will yield more fruits and we can see more women in politics. We've been having a chat with the UN Women Country Representative in Nigeria, Comfort Lamti. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Okay, Sunrise, we'll go on a quick break, and we'll be back with another topic and... Um, it has to do with celebration. We'll be 